Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church. Thank you for joining us as we begin our 60th uh, anniversary celebrations. The Office of Vespers will begin uh, momentarily. I wanted to give you a few announcements before we get started. Uh, first, as you can see, there are no uh, hymn numbers on the boards, so please pay attention uh, to your service bulletin. The hymn numbers you see in there will be for the Burgundy books in the pew, the Lutheran service book. So the first thing I want to tell you about with regard to uh, the office hymn, Salvation Unto Us Has Come, 555, we're going to, because it's 10 stanzas, you're welcome, uh, we're going to divide it up and have men sing some stanzas and women sing some other stanzas. So be sure you pay attention to that. Secondly, at the conclusion of the, the service, the ushers will dismiss everybody pew by pew. So please wait till the ushers come to dismiss you. And then those who are sticking around for the meal can make their way to Ermer Hall. Once again, welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church. <laughs>
O Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly.
be seated. The first reading is written in the first book of the Kings, the eighth chapter. <clears throat> then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands toward heaven and said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you, in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to your servants who walk before you with all their heart. Build it this day. Now, therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, keep for your servant David, my father, what you have promised him, saying, You shall not lack a man to sit before me on the throne of Israel. If only your sons pay close attention to their way, to walk before me as you have walked before me. Now, therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed which you have spoken to your servant David, my father. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this house that I have built. Yet have regard to the prayer of your servant and to his plea. O Lord, my God, listening to the cry and to the prayer that your servant prays before you this day, that your eyes may be open night and day toward this house, the place of which you have said, My name shall be there, that you may listen to the prayer that your servant offers toward this place, and listen to the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place, and listen in heaven, your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. The second reading is written in the Revelation to St. John, the 21st chapter. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. O Lord, have mercy on us. The third reading is written in the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich, and he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> 
Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name, that I may walk in your truth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen. Dear friends in Christ, holy people gather where the holy things are provided and promised, dished out and delivered. Our Lord speaks and we listen and receive the gifts he gives and we receive them with thanksgiving. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. The rhythm of our worship is the Lord to us, and then we back to the Lord, lifting up holy hands in thanksgiving and gratitude for the gifts that he has given. Arrows down to arrows up. The Lord to us and us to the Lord. The Lord to us and us to one another, speaking and singing together in hymns, in psalms and spiritual songs, proclaiming in our worship, the deeds of the Lord, proclaiming his deeds among the peoples. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Proclaim his name. Tell of what he has done among the peoples. Psalm 105, verse 1. Encapsulated at the back of your bulletin, encapsulated on the 60th anniversary banner over here at the lectern side. How fitting, how fitting that this verse mark the 60th anniversary of St. Paul Lutheran Church. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. That first verse of Psalm 105 marks your worship, holy ones of the Lord. You holy ones who gather where the holy things are, just as the psalmist reminds us. Just as the psalmist remembers through that entire psalm, Take a look through that Psalm 105 and you'll see a small uh, a history lesson of God's work with his people Israel from the time of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and all of his brothers on the way to Egypt where they grew as a nation until there was a Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. And then enslaved, they cry out and the Lord remembered his people and sent them Moses and signs to Pharaoh and brought them out with a mighty hand, taking them from Egypt and bringing them to a promised land, taking them from the land of sin and planting them in a land flowing with milk and honey, tearing them away from Pharaoh's hand and shielding them with his mighty arm, giving them a resting place. That's something to give the Lord thanks for. His great name saved the Israelites. Their exodus, his leading them forth. His presence in fiery column and cloudy pillar. His presence in the tabernacle and the ark. His presence in glory and provision. In quail and manna. In water from the rock and in bread from heaven. In promises made promises delivered. These are the mighty deeds made known among the peoples. In a word, salvation. Salvation unto us has come. The the Israelites of Exodus were brought to a desert place for 40 years, friends in Christ. A desert where they were thirsty and hungry and hot and bothered and sinners and saints. But whatever they may have thought about the Lord themselves at any given time, the Lord continued to provide for them. 
for 40 years. It's 480 months. 14,600 odd days. And in all that time, their clothes did not wear out, nor did their foot swell, for the Lord was with them, providing for his people water from the rock and bread from heaven. The Lord's people in a desert place for 60 years is the same story, saints of God. A people who are thirsty and hungry. That's why there's a dinner after this, right? And hot and bothered and sinners and saints. A people whom the Lord continues to provide for, not just for 40 years, but for 60 years, 720 months, 22,000 odd days, some of them odder than others. And in all that time, well, maybe some socks have gotten some holes, and yes, maybe there's been a sore limb or a sore foot or a sore joint, but the Lord has provided these 60 years, provided more, dear friends in Christ, provided more than a building, more than a parish hall and classrooms, more than property and bricks and mortar and stone and air conditioners and sound systems. It's provided pastors, and more than pastors, provided prophets and apostles and teachers and preachers and servant hands to serve his church, provided people, and not just any people, the people of God who receive what God gives with thanksgiving, who translate gratitude into service to their family and service to their community and service to their neighbor, knowing that the Lord doesn't need their good works, but their neighbor does, provided gifts from the rock, Gifts from heaven, not just any water, but water comprehended with God's word that makes you children of God and writes his name on you. Bread from heaven, not just any bread, but the very body and blood of Christ revealed to you, delivered to you for the forgiveness of sins, the body of Christ for you, the holy ones of St. Paul Lutheran Church, you, the body of Christ. You. Saints of God, you are the Lord's Israel, brought out of sin and provided for in the desert. 20 years, 40 years, 60 years, and for as many more as it takes until the Lord sees fit to bring his saints home across the border, the new heavens and the new earth that John saw in his revelation into the promised land. But however long it takes, whether it's 22,000 odd days or 200,000, we know the promise of our Lord from the psalm. Psalm 84, the, the, the psalm that we shared in this prayer office of Vespers, better is one day in your courts. And we're talking about 22,000. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Even the sparrow finds her nest, a dwelling place to feed her young. Here at your altar, O Lord, how lovely is your dwelling place. My soul longs, yes, even faints for you. Where you are present, O Lord, how much better to be a doorkeeper a janitor in the house of my Lord than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For just one day in your courts are better than a thousand elsewhere. And here you are, saints of God, the Lord's Israel, brought out of sin and enjoying his provision in this desert place. Not just one day in his courts, but 22,000 and thousands more to come. Sixty years worth of good days because every day that the Lord has made is a reason to rejoice and be glad in it. But the backward glance at the history of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Phoenix is not so much a celebration of the past as it is a celebration of the glorious season that our Lord has prepared for us today. 
The vision of ministry that awoke 60 years ago continues to serve a need. The need of a people here who need the gifts that the Lord gives who echo back in gratitude their confession of faith and extend his gifts to all. It continues to serve a need, I say, a need that Glendale has, that Maryvale has, and Phoenix, and Peoria, and, and, and Buckeye, and, and uh, Sun City West, and, and all the places that are served by the Lord's house here. It continues to serve a need that Arizona has, that the Pacific Southwest has, that America has, that the world has. It continues to serve a need, the desperate, aching need that the world has for the love of the Lord whose love for the world sent him outside the city to a desert place to be tempted by the devil who went outside the city to a barren area to be crucified, to suffer, and to die, and to be buried. Jesus Christ, the Righteous One, the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. The world who in its need continues to pant in a desert place, a community in need that needs to be fed and sheltered, a community in need of what only the Lord can give, an identity in Him, the forgiveness of sins, the gospel of salvation in Christ's death and resurrection. For make no mistake, 60 years is not a finish line. And like Frankie sang, the best is yet to come. And we know that as a sure and certain promise. The best is yet to come, one we celebrate every Easter, every funeral service for those saints that we memorialize every year. Your 60th All Saints Day celebration coming up in a couple of weeks in which St. Paul Lutheran in Phoenix will incorporate new members into this body of Christ and continue to celebrate all of the members of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Phoenix. For our Lord is not a Lord of the dead, but he is a Lord of the living. The best is yet to come. When the Lord says, there's the finish line, good and faithful servant, in the fulfillment of your baptism, when he calls to take you home. But in the meantime, saints of God, in the meantime, you've been given the freedom to play, to get to serving him now, in the meantime. Because 60 years of dishing out the Lord's gifts in the word rightly taught and preached, in the gifts being distributed, that has only demonstrated how great the need is still today of remaining faithful to doing so, of keeping these doors wide open so that people may see the deeds that you do, of keeping your windows wide open so that people can look in and see, of keeping your hearts and your minds open so that you can proclaim to your neighbors who need to know the deeds that the Lord has done among his people here, keeping your hands and your arms wide open to welcome those who are not like you, those who do not know the Lord the way that you do, those who need to know the Lord on his own terms and not their own, on his own terms, in terms of his gifts, his water from the rock, his bread from heaven. Because 60 years ago is history, and a history to be proud of, and a history also to be humbled by. Receiving what God has given for good and receiving it gratefully. But today, the present, 
This is the day of salvation for you and for all who need to hear the name that you proclaim. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, that in him you might become the righteousness of God. And working together with him, then we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Now is the day of salvation. Saints of God, as we give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name and make known his deeds, the deed that he has made known among you, first and foremost is Christ for you, Christ your exodus, Christ your salvation, Christ in the desert for you, Christ in the desert with you, Christ who died, Christ who is risen, and Christ who is coming again. Christ who is for you, Christ for your neighbor, the person and work of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. His deeds in Christ have saved you from the judgment of the world, and indeed has redeemed the world, redeemed your neighbor, redeemed St. Paul Lutheran Church, redeemed you. An anniversary is an opportunity to make that deed known. You make it known to your neighbors tonight. Our special guests who see the gifts that bear fruit for the Lord right here. There's something special going on at St. Paul in Phoenix. It's because the Spirit is in this house. Your new members see it in a couple of weeks as you wrap them into fellowship around the gifts that the Lord delivers. Your community will see it as you continue to partner on the property with Lexington School for Autism and extend your invitation to the least and the last and the lowly. And your community in Phoenix will continue to hear and see the Lord's deeds made known as you extend your personal invitations to the last and the lowly in your families and the least and the lost in your neighborhood. And do not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. It's time to give thanks to the Lord. It's time to call upon his name. It's time to make known his deeds among the peoples. It's time, after 60 years, because sisters and brothers in Christ, now is the seasonable. Now is the favorable time. Now is the day of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord unto life everlasting. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. And lift me up on my hands as he My Lord, and my Lord, and
Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, stir up the hearts of your faithful people to welcome and joyfully receive your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, that he may find in us a dwelling place who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you have promised to be with your church forever. We praise you for your presence in this place of worship and ask your ongoing blessing upon those who gather here. Dwell continually among us with your holy word and sacraments. Strengthen our fellowship in the bonds of love and peace and increase our faithful witness to your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Heavenly Father, God of all grace, govern our hearts that we may never forget your blessings, but steadfastly thank and praise you for all your goodness in this life, until with all your saints we praise you eternally in your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Almighty and gracious God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have commanded us to pray that you would send forth laborers into your harvest. Of your infinite mercy, give us true teachers and ministers of your word who truly fulfill your command and preach nothing contrary to your holy word. Grant that we, being warned, instructed, nurtured, comforted, and strengthened by your holy word, may do those things which are well-pleasing to you and profitable for our salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.